Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft manufacturing is a complex process that has faced several challenges, which have been overcome thanks to the work of engineers and technicians. This work can be seen at Boeing facilities, where the company takes advantage of its resources to manufacture its enormous fleet of airplanes. Within this process, building the fuselage is one of the central points in creating an aircraft. The company has undergone significant advancements in recent years, implementing automated systems as aiding tools for the factory workers. This includes the use of pairs of robots in the forward and aft sections. However, in recent years, the human component has still been the main focus. So the company has kept using robotics as a tool to enhance but not replace the work of the technicians. Once the main sub-assemblies have been built, one of the steps to continue involves the painting process. In places like the Everett facility, the factory has established an area dedicated to painting airplane wings, using the latest painting technology and automation. An example of this innovation is the automated spray method, where robots are used to apply multiple coats of paint with precision. This ensures consistency and good quality while not wasting paint. After drying the pieces, sub-assemblies would be finished to assemble the entire aircraft. These steps are followed for all Boeing models built to ensure consistency. The same process is used for the iconic 747, where the fuselage, wings and tail are manufactured and painted separately. Structural components like ribs and spars are added to those sub-assemblies, especially wings and fuselage, to increase the stiffness of the aircraft. Likewise, elements like the vertical and horizontal stabilizers are installed later in the rear section during the final assembly. Engines and other systems like hydraulics and electrical are carefully installed and routed in the main structure. This step requires great precision to ensure proper alignment, which in turn results in optimal and safe performance. Once the major systems and structural components are in place, the factory focuses on the interior assembly. Boeing bases its interior designs on the needs of passengers. This is why the company conducts research by engaging with the flying public. For example, during a survey, the passengers could describe their ideal flight as one where they have an empty seat next to them and can sleep throughout the trip. With such factors in mind, the company designs its interior by maximizing the space and giving a sensation of openness. However, not only the work that Boeing does with the interior of its airplane is related to passenger transportation. In this case, 
when fleet aircraft have reached their useful life, the company converts those passenger aircraft into freighters. By doing this, the converted airplanes can extend their life by another 20 years, saving them from being parked. Features like seats, lavatories, and other interior components are removed to create the cargo space. Finally, the fuselage is cut to install the cargo door, which allows the loading of containers. Rather than relying on converted planes to use them for cargo, Boeing also manufactures planes exclusively for this purpose. This is the case of the 747-8, whose manufacturing process is similar to that of the 747, but considering the specific design changes of a cargo aircraft. This includes a shorter upper deck, extra pallet spaces in the main and lower deck, and an increased maximum takeoff weight. Due to the conditions endured by the aircraft, the 747-8 is tested to guarantee correct performance. Typically, these tests involve taking the airplane to extreme conditions. One of them is the extreme takeoff tests, which are divided into two branches. The first comprises the velocity minimum unstick test which determines the lowest speed at which the plane can safely take off. During this procedure, the tail of an aircraft is deliberately touched down on a runway just before takeoff, providing an added margin of safety. Then, a heavy takeoff test is carried out loading the 747-8 freighter with 1.5 million pounds. This eventually assesses the aircraft's performance under maximum load conditions, pushing its limits to ensure safe and efficient operations. The company not only determines the takeoff performance of the aircraft, but must also consider that during these operations, emergencies may appear, forcing the plane to stop. This is why rejected takeoff tests are made, to ensure its safety and performance during those emergency scenarios. The evaluation team prepares the freighter by installing a set of brakes that are worn out to 100% capacity. By doing so, the test simulates the worst case scenario considering the braking performance. Afterward, the aircraft is fueled up to its maximum takeoff weight, surpassing 975,000 pounds. The plane accelerates up to 200 miles per hour, stopping abruptly when the pilot slams on the brakes. While this happens, the evaluation team measures heat dissipation on the brakes and the stability of the aircraft. By verifying that the aircraft can withstand the most extreme conditions, Boeing considers them ready for use and therefore ready to be sold to its customers. For freighters like the 747-8, the cargo companies evaluate them to determine if they can support their requirements. Such businesses analyze factors like payload capacity, range, and fuel efficiency. Those specifications are provided by Boeing, which they obtain during the testing phase. When the cargo company decides to proceed with the purchase, the terms and conditions are settled, and the contract is signed. Once the purchase and manufacturing are complete, 
the plane is delivered to the cargo company. This requires a previous inspection of the aircraft by both the manufacturer and the buyer. Ensuring that the plane meets the agreed specifications and quality standards. After a delivery ceremony, the plane flies to the location specified by the cargo company, where it will be stored and used. These cargo companies can select from the numerous features available in Boeing freight airplanes. One such feature commonly used by those companies is the nose door of the 747-8F. This provides a large opening, making the loading and unloading processes much easier and enhancing the flexibility in cargo transportation. For these airplanes to be able to transport these enormous loads, they require engines with sufficient power to withstand these conditions. In the case of Boeing, its planes are powered by GE engines. Such engines are manufactured in the Auburn facility, which has the latest manufacturing technology for aircraft propulsion systems. This facility is the first of its kind to mass produce additive components for the jet propulsion industry. Most of this technology is dedicated to producing composite fan blades for the GE90 and GE NX engines. With such manufacturing processes, the engineers can optimize the component design and achieve improved performance and weight reduction. To test such engines, General Electric built a special facility with the necessary instrumentation and capabilities. That is the GE Aviation Test Research and Development Center in Winnipeg. This facility is dedicated completely to testing and developing GE's aircraft engines. It's the only site in the world capable of testing engines with 150 inches in diameter and 150,000 pounds of thrust. Such capacities make it an essential resource for GE Aviation and its customers. This is enhanced by its main test cell, which is one of the largest in the world. At 130 feet long, this place can handle engines of all sizes, including the GE9X. Added to the Winnipeg Center, GE also counts with the testing grounds in Peebles, Ohio. Here, the company evaluates the GE9X performance, reliability and safety before it enters service on aircraft like the Boeing 777X. During ground testing, the engine is run at various thrust levels to measure its ability to generate power, including transient testing, where the engine is subjected to rapid changes in thrust and power demands to simulate real-world flight scenarios. The development and application of such technology show Boeing's rich legacy in pioneering aviation advancements. Despite the challenges, it continues to stand at the forefront of aerospace innovation, delivering next-generation aircraft. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.